The views expressed on 26 North Halstead do not necessarily reflect those of the management or staff of WCIU-TV, Weigel Broadcasting, or its subsidiaries. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Daredevil, these are just a few of the classic comic book superheroes that have seen a recent rebirth as icons of modern pop culture. When we examine more closely the parallels between graphic novels and the prevailing attitudes in society over the years, it's easy to believe that there simply is no such thing as a non-white superhero. Well, the truth of the matter is that there certainly are quite a few minority superheroes out there, as well as artists and publishers that are working hard to present their own images in the comic book universe. We'll meet a few of them today on 26 North Halstead. This city we call home is a diverse mix of communities and neighborhoods, each contributing its own unique ingredient to that rich flavor that's unmistakably Chicago. This is a forum created with the intent of facilitating a dialogue in an effort to better understand some of the topics and issues affecting all of us here in Sweet Home Chicago. Welcome to 26 North Halstead. Welcome once again to 26 North Halstead. I'm your host, George Blaze. Today we're talking about minorities in the superhero universe. My first guests joining us are wonderful artists, producers, publishers of Kiss Me Comics, Barbara and Rod Jenkins. Thank you for joining us Thanks, today. Thank you. Now, you sent me a bunch of work here, and it's really great. There's a lot to talk about. I guess let's first get a little bit of background on on how you, you got into comics. Uh, Barbara, especially you, being a, a, an African-American woman, and you're not you know, primarily the image that people think of of a, of a comic book producer or publisher. How did you get into the comics? Right. Well, I attended American Academy of Art here in Chicago, and uh, it was part of an assignment for a creative writing class. And uh, one of the projects was to either create a children's book or a comic book. And I chose to write a story uh, based on a character I had been thinking of before, but just never got around to it, and it was the opportune time to do so. And um, after the projects uh, were turned in, the professor at the school, he liked it so much, he told me that he wanted to see me take it as far as I could go with it. And I've been working on it ever since, and that was in uh, October of 1994. Wow. And, and Rod, what's your story? How'd you get into um, the comic book genre? Oh, I've always been an avid fan and reader of the comic books, and um, I always thought, man, it would be nice to have one of my own. So um, at, you know, after we found, found each other and settled down, I started writing, writing one out, you know, because I said to myself, well, I would like to have a character. And lo and behold, the one day we we always were still going to the stores and looking, and I was you know I would see her art and I see what was on the shelves and I'm like, she's better than some of the stuff that's on here, and I'm like, why can't we do this? Why can't we do this? And then finally we just said, guess you know we decided to just say, let's do it. It was really nothing really stopping us, right? <laughs> there was but ourselves. So. Yeah, yeah. So we just decided to just try it and run with it. Um, we already knew that with the way the system is already set up that we would probably have to go out on our own and we were already doing things on our own because we were doing greeting cards and stuff like that already. So we, it was just a matter of just making a switch. As far as your, you know, your history of, of being a fan of, of comic books and what have you. Tell me a little bit about about your experiences as as being an African American man and reading the comics. And did you ever, honestly, did you ever notice that there weren't really any black superheroes out there? Yeah, that 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 was the one glaring thing about it. You always saw the pretty the pretty Caucasian superhero white guy, and. Don't get me wrong, I, 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 was, I was still into the story, but then there was nothing that could relate to me or the characters that they did have as, um, African, as they were African American were always the sidekick. You know, they, were never, they could never be as strong or as powerful as their white counterparts. And I'm like, well, that's the one thing I said to myself, well, if I'm going to design a character, I want him to be black, I want him to be the star, you know, and any sidekicks, be they white, green, whatever, 
you know, they'll be able to stand on their own right, but at the same time when they come together, there'll, there'll be some kind of unity. Um, perfect example, um, the Black Panther. The guy is black. He's, he's the king of his own African nation. Technological, smart, but yet and still, every time Marvel would bring him his own title, it will, they will only give it like six months, okay. and then they dump it. For that, you know, because they say it's not popular enough. Well, look, look what they're marketing to. Right. You know, they're, they're not saying here's a black superhero for black people. Or well, what were some? What were some of your favorites, generally speaking? Um, generally, um, I, ha I, I would have to say the Avengers, okay. because they, you had a nice group, a, a group mentality. You know, and you have all these various personalities coming together, clashing, and fighting this big, huge evil. Um, the other one that I liked was Thor, um, because of, because of the because of the the tie to the to to tradition and the old country, mm -hmm. and and seeing this 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 guy, this so-called god, you know, all powerful and everything, yet yet still reduced down to a mere humble human shell, when it's all when it's all said and done, and the fact that he needs that human half in order to be complete. And, and Barbara, how about you? What are some of your favorite comics that are out there? Uh, I always admired uh, Spider-Man. Okay. And uh, I liked a lot of the DC um, comics. Uh, I was very much into the Sandman, but that was canceled. Um, but as far as uh, me being a woman, there was really nothing to really look forward to as far as another woman character other than maybe Catwoman. I'm not sure uh, if there are any others they're like they're like like we're like talking secondary. before they're kind of off to the side yeah, or exactly. secondary characters mm -hmm. but tell you what let's take a short break when we come back we're going to talk about what it takes to start your own publishing company Welcome back to 26 North Halstead, talking with Barbara and Rod Jenkins of Kiss Me Comics, all about the comic book universe. Um, as far as that little graphic there was talking about how stereotypes pretty much sum up what you saw of, of early comic books, uh, superheroes and sidekicks as far as minorities are concerned. Um, when, you, when you're putting your books together, writing your stories, um, are, are you trying to merely just entertain or are you trying to put some kind of a social message in there or is it the balance of the two? Where are you coming from? Just a little bit of both okay. uh, for my character. Um, since it's uh, really a psychological thriller, and we're, talk, always, we're talking about serenade now. Right. Okay. I always try to end it. Uh, I want to leave a question mark or make, you know, have a person to think about what actually is going on and it to be at a point where it could be mysterious to where they would have to read it again and well, tell, again. This is, this is a fascinating book. Tell me a little bit about serenade. Who is serenade? Okay. Uh, serenade, uh, she's, well, actually she's a product of... Um, her mom was Korean, and her dad was African-American serviceman. Uh, she was born in Korea, Seoul, Korea, and um, she never really knew her dad. You know, she was just, you know, cling, cling to her mom, and she met him for the first time when she was 14. Uh, but she was unbalanced to begin with. She murdered her father. Um, but she moved to uh, Chicago uh, at the meeting um, an entrepreneur, a, a black entrepreneur, um, who was looking for someone to uh, promote his cosmetics company in, the, in Chicago. Basically, the story is taking place in the Chicago area. And so he saw her, she's a singer in the storyline, and uh, he was so fascinated with her beauty and the way she performed, he hired her, he came back to the United States and were married and he was gunned down in a case of mistaken identity. Oh, you gave so, away like the first <laughs> entire book there. <laughs> I don't want to give away too, too much because I want people to go out there and pick up these books. Uh, a character okay. like Bounty Hunter, tell me a little bit about Bounty Hunter. Um, Bounty Hunter is the story of a young urban teen. Um, 
not from the best of worlds. Uh, and just like, like, like many of our black youth, they think if I go out and sell drugs, I have the money and the, and the funds necessary to better my life. Okay, so one night he does that and he gets kidnapped by this um, um, doctor who is the product of the gen Nazi genetic experiments. He is the, what he thinks is quote unquote perfect man. And he wants to further the Nazi agenda, but in, in his mind, normal man, homo sapien, is not the answer. He wants to create a brand new race, um, homo mutanus, and from there, they would be his loyal subjects, and he then in turn would be their leader, thus completing the endless, his um, cycle of world domination. So what he's doing is he was kidnapping human people and really re reformatting their DNA. My character is one of the few lucky ones strong enough to survive. So he escapes, and then from there, um, he, uh, in order to keep the secret quiet, the doctor has his mother kidnapped. And then from there, he gets a battle suit and goes rescuing his mother. And then from there, everything else just falls into place. As, as far as when, when you're coming up with your storylines and your ideas, do, do you include any of your own life or yourself in there? Or how, how much of you are, are in the characters you write? Um, actually, it helps to have a, in my case, it helps, it helps to have a, a schizophrenic personality. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, in, 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 all my, in, all, in all my characters, there is a, there is a little bit of, of of one facet of my personality in it. Um, Bounty Hunter is the what I think is the good in me. Um, you know, always want to try to do the right thing at the right time and, and trying to, to be the hero that his mom thinks he is and, of, and what he feels in his heart. Um, my villain, Negabrain, is the person that really was like to rule the world, conquer it, you know, don't let anything stand in his way, you know, to, to have that arrogant attitude and be able to say, I can crush you, you know, and keep on stepping. Now, are, are, your, are your books geared towards the adult readers, to kids? Uh, tell me a little bit about, about how you gear that. Serenade, with its uh, dark storyline, is d geared mostly to uh, adults. Okay. It's adult, adult uh, drama. Yeah, um, I try to keep Bounty Hunter um, PG, uh, so it's because nowadays with the way comics are nowadays, they're generally geared towards adults, and um, and I've read some of it, and I wouldn't, you know, some of the modern stories, that I would not let my kids read that, so I try to keep my storyline to where it can be read by anybody, be it 6 or 60. What's what's the hardest thing as as far as having a a, a publishing company and dealing with this genre of, of work? As far as getting your work out there, getting people to buy it, how, how do you actually do that? How do you market your work? Well, we it is a lot of hard, hard work, um, especially for a black African American woman. We're very obscure, and um, that makes it even harder. But it's just a dream that I've always had ever since I told you about the uh, thing with college. And so I just wanted to pursue it. And um, it's just my goal, so I just work hard. Yeah. How, hard how, do you, how do you find your work has been received, like when you go to conventions? And uh, well, for, for pretty much we've been up in Canada, and up there they that the mindset is totally different. It's not where the major publishing companies have such a foothold and where the, there's the, the, the independent genre is alive and is, is actually the predominant thing. And so for us to go up there and say, we, we've got this, and they look at it, they, you know, we're widely accepted, whereas let's say we go to Wizard or someplace here, and, you know, and it's like, the, you know, we say, here we are, they're like, all, you know, by the time they get through with the major titles and everybody else, you know, they're not really receptive to us. And seeing where the, as for the new kids on the block, you know, they don't tend to look at us like, okay, they, you know, they, they expect us to be coming and going within two years. But little do they realize that this is for us. We want this to be our nine to five permanently. Mm -hmm. And if it weren't for the Internet and the conventions, um, and, you know, message boards, getting our name out there, nobody would know who we are at all. So.
As far as as far as what the future holds for Kiss Me Comics, what are some of the things that that we can look forward to? Some of the things you have kind of on the back burner right now. <laughs> oh, we already have people interested in creating statues for for Serenade, and um, we met uh, some independent film producers in Toronto uh, last month, and um, they like the story, the Serenade storyline so much, so they want to uh, collaborate and produce an animated film so wow. that's in yeah. the works that's exciting <laughs> mm -hmm. if there if there are some young african-american kids out there with a little artistic talent watching today uh, what kind of words of advice or or Ooh. wisdom could you give them if they want to be doing what you know, you're doing keep drawing no matter what draw Just draw draw <laughs> um the the one thing that i've learned because uh, I'm slowly, slowly coming into my own because um, I used to have to tell her how, how I want this. That started with just stick figures, and she would tell me, I can't read. I, what can I do with a stick figure? <laughs> I, I need more. So I started doing more, and the more I did, the better I've gotten. So that um, helps, and staying, definitely staying in school is the, is a very huge key because I would not be able to do a website or, or even think about trying a marketing plan or anything if I didn't have some kind of background in, in the schools that I went to. So it, it takes more than simply being a good drawer to do, make yes. something like this exactly. happen. You, yes. you kind of have to be committed to it. It's a lot yes. of hard work. And uh, you, and you got to study people who are already doing it. So yes. hopefully at the end of the show, I'll give you some information so you can contact Kiss Me Comics. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to talk to another person from Kiss Me Comics, plus another person you should know in the minority comic book universe. Where is he here? Somewhere in here. <laughs> <laughs> have a topic or issue you'd like to see on our program, send us a letter here at U-City Productions, 26 North Halstead Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60661, or email us at 26nhalstead at wciu.com. Welcome back to 26 North Halstead, talking all about the new comic universe. If y'all don't know about it, then uh, you're gonna, hopefully you'll see a lot of these people at your next comic book convention or you'll see their titles at your comic book store. Joining us now is Jose Misarina, creator of The Unbelievable Laundry Detergent Man, as well as Robert Boyd, another of the family, the Kiss Me Comics family. Thank you all for joining us today. This is really great and this is really exciting. Jose, let me tell you something. When I saw the unbelievable laundry detergent man. And first of all, tell me a little bit about your background before we start talking about the character here. Um, how did you get into the comic book world? Um, I got in through the comic book world when I uh, learned how to read. I was four years old before I went to kindergarten. My brother and I used to uh, get old comic books and it took us about a week to read one entire comic. But uh, that's how I got into it. Then later I started collecting, and uh, some friends in high school also were collecting, and I just started drawing and writing, and that's how I got into the whole comic book thing. And, and Robert, how about, how about yourself? What's, what's your story? Well, um, I've been friends with uh, my uh, partners for uh, many a year now, and we would go to the uh, various comic book shops, and we, you know, we enjoyed the particular titles that, that we like to read on a regular basis. Uh, one day we sat back and we thought, wow, you know, maybe we can do this. You know, we have great ideas and uh, interesting ideas and probably in some cases more exciting storylines. So we decided maybe we should collaborate and make our own comic, comic titles. Now, I have to ask you all as well, uh, growing up reading comics and looking at the comic book titles, did you feel a certain alienation because you didn't see a lot of major characters that were black or latino well um as we got older we noticed there were a lot of uh, shall we say white males who dominated the comic scene and we decided wow uh, well where where are the uh, black heroes uh, is it not possible for a black man to be a hero and help save the city or save the world how come there are only so many males and maybe one or two females as well or or uh latino heroes you right. know, in general right and, and that uh, now certainly you can you can find some black even sidekicks i don't remember any latinos in the marvel or you uh, know universe or maybe i'm just missing them 
Well, I can't remember any off, you know, off the top of my head, but I do remember reading uh, comics and uh, seeing that many artists are Latino, like you have George Perez and Sergio Aragones and uh, Angelo Torres, and uh, those kind of things kept me, you know, inspired me to keep going and hoping that maybe one day I could make my own Latino character, you know, as the superhero. Unfortunately, uh, my uh, publisher, Rene Castellano of Instant Press Comics, he's also a Latino who, uh, he's the uh, founder and president of Instant Press Comics, and he gave me a shot, and uh, now my books are coming out frequently with a Latino uh, hero as the star. Now, Robert, tell me a little bit about about your major character that you're working with right now. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of production on our my my own, own title for Kiss Me Comics called Excessive Force. Okay. Uh, it is the story of a, a young man named William Evans. Um, he works for a company that designs bulletproof vests for the police department. Um, one particular day, he stumbles across information that his company is corrupt and supplying arsenal, arsenal and weaponry to uh, street gangs. Okay. And um, he uh, is working on an experimental bulletproof vest. He takes it, um, uses it for his own purposes to bring the company to his knees. And, you know, I want it to be exciting. I want it to be a gritty crime drama, and I just want people to enjoy it. Fantastic. And the unbelievable laundry detergent, man. One of my favorite comics I've read in a long time. Tell me a little bit of, of how you came up with this character and a little bit about the character. Um, I came up with the entire character. Actually, I wasn't looking out to make a Latino character at the time. I was actually going to make a spoof of uh, the amazing Spider-Man for a friend of mine. And so I changed amazing to unbelievable and laundry detergent. You know, instead of being Spider, it was a laundry detergent man. And as I started making it, I said, I'm not going to make it a spoof because I started uh, liking what I was drawing and making. So I said, I'm just going to go ahead and make it a regular series. Now, one of the fascinating things which go across all the comics, but especially I noticed in, in yours, Jose, is that some of the places and in, in scenes that are in your book, I could, I could drive down Halstead and 18th and Halstead oh, right. and see some of these places. Is that it? And tell me a little bit about that. Right. Actually... Um, Actually, the place, a lot of places in the book are my actual neighborhood on Morgan Street. So uh, there's pictures of certain alleyways and there's certain streets off of Halstead. And uh, I include also real people, like, for instance, the grandfather character is my actual deceased grandfather. Uh, then I also have uh, a pet goldfish in the story who's... Uh, I used to have a goldfish, so I just thought back and I said, I'll throw my goldfish in there. And as the series goes along, I'll probably start putting more things in, like uh, like the Bridgeport Coffee House that's also situated on 31st and Morgan. That's uh, where the uh, book takes place. So I go around and I take pictures of the neighborhood in certain spots. And like you said, you know, it's pretty recognizable. I get the same comments from other people who say, hey, you know, that looks like my certain neighborhood. <laughs> right. And that was actually what I was trying to do. How much of your own personal life or environment do you include in, in terms of writing your character? Well, um, uh, I guess first off, the character will look like me. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, the character will look like me. Um, there will be, will be some instances based on personal experience. Um, with all titles for, for our company, I try to incorporate uh, things that I've been through in my life or things that I think might happen uh, just to give it a more human feel. Also, um, I try to inject a little bit of humor. You know, you want, you want the comic to be action-packed and everything, but it doesn't hurt to laugh once in a while, to really enjoy, enjoy what you're reading. I, I, think, I think that's what, what makes me enjoy a, a comic book when I read it is, you know, it's really serious, there's a lot of stuff going on, but there are points in there that you got to crack up, and you can tell it's a joke kind of between the artist or mm -hmm. between the writer and, and, and the reader. Um, I, I've, it's it, you know just the unbelievable laundry detergent man. You think hearing that title like this is ridiculous. Come on, but when you when you when you start reading it, and you see you're dealing with things like gang violence that goes on in the neighborhood and real things like that. And this guy is really you know a crime fighter. And then you have this dirty laundry character come in there. Um, is this are, are you, what's the message you're trying to put across with 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 the laundry detergent man? Or is there a message? Uh, well. When I came up with the, with the uh, name of the character, like I said, it was a spoof. But then uh, 
the actual story isn't like a hilarious Archie comic or Mad Magazine. It does deal with uh, gang violence. Uh, later on, it'll deal with like drug abuse and you know serious topics. And uh, the message I like to get across is, you know, uh, through my artwork, if there are any children out there of uh, minority backgrounds, you know, you don't necessarily have to be in a gang to be involved. You know, have friends or anything. If you read. Uh, if you write, if you draw, uh, anything constructive, you can use that in a positive way. And so hopefully when they read my uh, comic book, they'll see that it's not actually like uh, too comical, but it does have a serious side to it. And hopefully it can inspire young children of minority backgrounds to also uh, use their talents constructively. And I also want to say for the children that do read the book, please do not drink soap because it will not turn you into a superhero, and uh, I don't want to be sued. <laughs> <laughs> That's the important thing. It says it on every issue. Warning, Please. drinking soap will kill you. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have some more thoughts. <laughs> North Halstead. Hopefully watching this program today has inspired young artists out there to get out there and do their own thing and start their own companies and get your work out there, get your work published. Uh, being published or publishing your, yourself, uh, what, what are the major challenges? We only have a couple of seconds here left. Uh, just exposure, exposure, exposure. It's kind of hard. Some people are so, um, how can I put a program to oversaturate with the Marvel DC um, product that they know they need to try something different expand their horizons there's more stuff out there give it a shot jose how about yourself uh just keep doing what you're doing and don't let it don't listen to any negative comments from anyone and uh maybe one day they might be on this show too with you <laughs> oh that and could I be also cool. have a gift here for you george uh -oh. Oh, Hopefully. check this out. It's the unbelievable George Blaze. Check me out. I got my own comic, yo. Now that is fantastic. And for my wonderful friends at Kiss Me Comic, look at this. I got a, I got the whole family tree there on a t-shirt and a serenade CD. There's music that goes with the book. Oh, man, this is great. Well, thank you both. Thank for coming for on the show, for all my guests for coming on the show today. Remember out there, expand your minds, get out there, check out some of this independent work out here because it's some of the best work going on and some of it's about you. See you next week.